So this patient came to me, and her, her history is a very common health history that I see with my patient with, with thyroid disease. Unfortunately, she had been struggling for several years um, with symptoms and did not get symptom reduction despite use of medication. So when she came into me, she had been diagnosed about seven years ago after her last pregnancy. She was having symptoms of brain fog, fatigue, inability to lose weight, anxiety, frequent waking, bloating, constipation. She was on, again, like I said, thyroid medication, and she was also on an antidepressant. Uh, her social history, she was using caffeine to kind of get through the day, especially in mornings, because she was having a very difficult time getting out of bed in the morning. She couldn't exercise because she was so fatigued. Um, her family history, she had a mom that also had thyroid disease and also was bipolar. And she had major concerns about developing bipolar. She was really concerned about her mental health. And one of her goals was to be able to get off her thyroid, I mean, her um, antidepressant medication. Her symptoms, she had depression, lack of motivation. She knew what she needed to do a lot of times, but just couldn't muster the motivation to get up and do it, especially when it came to exercise. These symptoms increased during her premenstrual phase. Um, she had symptoms of hypo, uh, reactive hypoglycemia, especially after lunchtime. So she would eat lunch and then actually need to take a nap before she could pick her daughter up from school. And she was not sharing this information with her husband. She did not want him to know that she was at home napping while he was at work. Um, she'd had about a 15-pound weight gain over the last year. She fluctuated with her diet. I classified her as standard American diet because she was craving a lot of sugar and she was oftentimes giving in. So intellectually, she wanted and she knew she needed to be on a whole food-based diet, but she couldn't pull it off longer than three days at a time. She had a very low libido. Um, she had mental and physical fatigue. And then she was hypervigilant at night. But she was also allowing her daughter, who was seven, to sleep with she and her husband. So she was not getting good quality sleep. Her vital signs were somewhat normal, with the exception of she had 30, 37% body fat, despite her BMI not really being that elevated. So when we look at testing for her, we did a, a wide array of testing um, so that we could see what was going on with her metabolically. Um, again, she was on thyroid hormone. Despite being on thyroid hormone, she had a normal TSH, but a low T4 and T3. So her TSH was not being responsive. And I'll show you why in a little bit when we look at her um, neurotransmitters. She definitely had elevated thyroid antibodies. She had low ferritin, and we need iron in order to make um, T4. And we want to see that ferritin level around 100. She did not have anemia, though. She did have um, insulin resistance with an elevated fasting glucose. Um, she had low vitamin D, and vitamin D is an immune modulator. So we definitely want to improve her vitamin D status. We assessed her cortisol level because her fatigue was so significant, and she did have a roller coaster pattern of cortisol, um, which indicates poor blood sugar control. She also had low DHEA, and DHEA is also an immune modulator. So we definitely want to replace her DHEA and her vitamin D. We had the um, advantage of doing um, neurotransmitter testing um, through Sinesco, and what we see here is a classic picture of malabsorption. So all, basically all of her neurotransmitters were rock bottom low, and there was no compensatory mechanism. Um, her serotonin and GABA were not balanced, and she had very low catecholamines as well. So when we have low serotonin and low catecholamines, we would expect her, that her TSH is going to be unreliable and, and not a good measure of what's going on at the tissue level with her thyroid hormone. We also did a gut analysis. Um, she was gluten positive, and she had, had been on a gluten-free diet. We also assessed um, some labs through a, a lab company called Cyrex, and I'll show you those in a minute. But it's a way of assessing gut permeability. And we also assess for other food sensitivities beyond just gluten. And we looked at immune markers and antibodies to other tissue other than thyroid because she really wanted to know predictably what she was at risk for long term in the way of autoimmunity. On her gut testing, she also had low digestive enzymes and she had lots of inflammation in the small intestine. And again, that's where you're going to absorb all of your nutrients primarily, um, especially your minerals and your B vitamins. 
So very important for um, nutrient status for her. So again, Cyrex Labs is a lab that does testing for autoimmunity, and they do have a panel called a Cyrex Array 2 that's specific for leaky gut. So we can actually measure antibodies to proteins that should not be showing up in the vascular system, and this is a serum test. So she definitely had markers for leaky gut that look like um, transcellular and paracellular damage, along with um, gram-negative bacteria markers. And so she had established leaky gut going on. In her food panel, again, we tested for foods beyond gluten. And what we found was just about everything we tested her for, she was positive for, for sensitivity. And so we had to do a major food elimination for her. Um, this is showing us that the immune system is just not happy. So a lot of this is cross-reactivity and probably not true sensitivity to these foods. We had her remove those from her foods in her treatment plan. Again, we also did a Cyrex test that looked at predictive autoimmune markers. And I'm showing you this because we have a before and after. And I just want you to see what a gut protocol um, can do to help improve the risk for progressive autoimmunity. So what we did with this patient is, again, she did that 21-day metabolic cleanse. After the cleanse, we started her on a gut protocol that included hydrochloric acid. We wanted to make sure she could denature her proteins. She was on probiotics colostrum, and then we put her on neurotransmitter support using Sonesco formulas, again, because they have enzymes in there, they're easy to absorb. We started her on Lintra and ProLint, and then in a few weeks, we added some Prosite D. Um, we had her remove those foods that she was sensitive to, and we had her eating basically a whole food-based diet. We did have to be careful with her because her serotonin was so low. She could not tolerate a low-carb diet, right? We had to have those carbs to be able to stimulate serotonin production. So we had to just be careful about healthy carbs. We implemented some stress management. Again, it all starts in the brain, so if we don't deal with the brain's response to stress, we may, may not see healing or complete resolution. We also had her get the daughter out of the bed. Sleep is super important, and we're not going to repair and recover as long as there's not good quality sleep. And we started her on a B-complex and hemolyte. I'll also mention with her, we did do a short-term um, six weeks of IV therapy weekly in order to build up her nutrient status um, because she just wasn't able to absorb on her own with the diet that we had her on. Her follow-up testing that we did, we looked at that Cyrex Array 2. And again, it was completely clean after gut protocol, which is always a victory. Um, because we know that we've reduced her risk for developing progressive autoimmunity. And then just for kicks, we repeated um, that protocol. We repeated that um, autoimmune test for cross-reactive responses to um, tissues. And so what we noticed with her is that most of those antibodies that she had to tissues went back to normal, with the exception of three things. And so we definitely decreased momentum in her immune system. I'll also note that she was able to wean off of her effector, and we also changed her armor thyroid over to WP thyroid because WP thyroid is natural desiccated thyroid similar to armor, except it does not have any fillers or cornstarch. And the fact that she was reacting to all those foods, we made sure that we um, got those influences out of her diet plan. So like I mentioned before, a lot of times with these patients with hypothyroidism that's autoimmune-derived, Hashimoto's, they've been looking for a while. They've been struggling. Before she got to me, she had spent seven years of having symptoms that were not resolved by medications. We had to dig a little bit deeper. So I love this cartoon. You know, we have exhausted all conventional measures. One last desperate option is to put you on an alternative natural medicine that has a 96% success rate. So again, why do we wait to the very, why do we wait until we're completely miserable before we succumb to lifestyle changes? 